Welcome to the Real Estate Guys radio program. Thanks for tuning into the show. You're going to be glad you did because we have an awesome guest. Our guest is you. It's Ask the Guys. Your questions, our answers. Today on the Real Estate Guys radio program. The Real Estate Guys are throwing a party and you're invited. Join us at the New Orleans Investment Conference, November 1st through 4th. Now in its 45th year, it's the nation's longest running investment conference and features some of the biggest names in economics and investing, including Doug Casey, Dennis Gartman, Rick Rule, and Peter Schiff. The Real Estate Guys are speaking in multiple sessions, attending lots of others, and we're hosting a hospitality suite one of the evenings for our friends and listeners, including some VIPs for you to mingle with. So make plans today to join the Real Estate Guys at the New Orleans Investment Conference. With everything going on in the world, no serious investor can afford to miss it. For all the details, send an email to New Orleans at realestateguysradio.com and it will tell you how to get upgraded tickets and join the party. That's New Orleans at realestateguysradio.com. And we'll see you in New Orleans. Welcome to the Real Estate Guys radio show. I'm your host, Robert Helms. With me, as usual, it's our financial strategist and co-host, Russell Gray. Hey, Robert. It is absolutely amazing how many cards and letters we get, which are really mostly emails. And uh, we thought we'd do another uh, Ask the Guys. You know, it's the end of spring. Uh, summer is starting. It's kind of a late spring cleaning. And just going through all these questions, there's some really good questions that we get from our listeners. Now, some are so specific that it's just really hard to answer them. But uh, we've assembled a group today that I think will uh, help everybody out. And uh, here are the disclaimers. Uh, we don't give advice. As the Real Estate Guys, it's not our job to give you any type of advice. What we do is give you ideas and information, and we are not tax or legal professionals. With that out of the way, question number one is a great question from Daryl in Boonville, Missouri. Hey guys, my question is, what is one of the best ways to get involved in investing in real estate for the first time? Well, Daryl, the reason we wanted to start off with this question, and it's such a good question, is lots of folks find themselves interested in real estate investing, but don't really know where to start. And there are so many books and blogs and podcasts and seminars and on and on and on that it can be a little overwhelming. And yet the basics of real estate are pretty simple. Yeah, I think, you know, that it is the most popular question we get. And I think a lot of people who find the show early, they're out there searching, they're looking for answers, they're trying to figure out how to get in the game, which is great. I think it does start with education. So the question is, what's one of the best ways? And that's really a loaded question, because it really depends. It depends on what you have to start with, where you want to go, what you want to do. But generally speaking, real estate is done with debt. And so to me, the first place to start is to take an assessment of where you're at in terms of debt. Go meet with a mortgage professional, find out what your credit score is as far as real estate is concerned, what your documentable income is, what type of loan programs you would qualify for, and begin to go to work on preparing yourself to be a efficient, effective borrower. Now, you may or may not have enough capital to make a down payment, and that's a different discussion. Uh, you need to get an idea what you have to work with. And then from there, we talk a lot about personal investment philosophy. What is that you're trying to accomplish. Most people want to grow. That's what they're primarily interested in. And then you want to be looking for markets that have good supply and demand dynamics and the opportunity to grow. But to me, I mean, it really starts with education and then an assessment of your resources, starting with your credit and your, your what I call a borrowing power analysis or your lendability. Absolutely. One of the great benefits of real estate investing is it gives us the opportunity to use the tool of leverage. And you can really only do that if you have a good credit profile. Not to say it's impossible to invest without a good credit score. Lots of folks have done it. We've had periods in our life where our credit has been terrible and we've still done lots and lots of real estate. But when you're getting started, adding the benefit of leverage can be huge. Now, I'm in the same camp with Russ as far as education being the primary thing. And a lot of education, such as this podcast, doesn't cost you a lot of money. However, it does take your time. And so you want to set aside and budget some time to be serious about investing. Go to a seminar or class or meetup. Go to a local real estate investment club or group. Read books about the type of real estate that you're interested in. But don't get so off track in learning that you don't take action. One of my favorite ways to get involved in real estate for the first time 
especially if you don't have a lot of capital, which is not what you said in your question, but I know a lot of folks have that question, is to offer to help someone who is busy doing the thing you want to be doing. A lot of folks who are successful in real estate investing have more money than time. And when you start out, you might have more time than money. And so the opportunity to go and lend a hand in exchange for learning can be huge. That's the kind of casual way to start a mentor relationship, but you don't even have to go that far. You just have to figure out someone that's doing the type of business and ask, hey, can I help? Can you roll up your sleeves? Can you go do some homework? And then you might even consider your first deal as a partnership in some way. Now that brings to it a whole other host of things you got to consider, but rather than do it all yourself, is there a way to partner? One of our favorite ways to partner is through real estate syndication. That's when lots of different people put their money and their time together to do something. And you may be able to get involved that way. I got into real estate development by passively investing in a syndication for a developer and I was just interested and so I was a student and I hung around and I asked questions and thankfully the uh, guy leading the charge was totally open to having someone by his side, you know, coaching me along and helping me understand. So I think that's another way. Uh, this year on the Summit at Sea. Uh, we had Tom Kroll who talked about wholesaling. Wholesaling is a way to get involved in real estate. It's not for everybody, but for some folks, it's just a way to go out and find deals that you aren't necessarily ready to do yourself, but that you can pass along to somebody, sometimes for the experience, sometimes for a check. You know, I'll say that there's a couple of things. One is uh, I love the whole concept of apprenticing with someone who's experienced, uh, but just be careful because there's a lot of quote unquote mentoring programs out there uh, that involve writing a great big check. And that can be okay. You just need to make sure that the person that you're going to be paying to mentor you really honestly knows what they're doing. I mean, do your due diligence. But I think, Robert, the direction you were going was more find somebody that's out there that's real and just help them. And the exchange of them mentoring you in exchange for you helping them uh, is really the exchange of value that you're after. The only other thing I'll say that I think would be helpful is it, it really, what I said earlier, the idea of an assessment of resources. You have to figure out what it is you need to invest. Typically, you need credit, you need down payment, you need a team, you're going to need some technical advisors, people who are very specific, who know what they're doing with regard to uh, real estate property management, if you're going to be a buy and hold or construction, if you're going to do some type of a flipping. So just it, it's kind of like being a football coach and kind of mapping out your whole plan and looking at what you need to do to build build your team. And then when you figure that out, then you have to say, okay, who do I already know? What do I already have to work with? And then you're going to have gaps. You're going to have holes. And then that that really gives you the guidance. I've got to go fill those gaps. You can use partnerships. You can use these uh, mentoring relationships. You can get into equity shares, which is a kind of a form of a partnership syndication. I mean, there's a lot of different ways to begin to go fill those gaps. And then you have to put yourself in an environment where you're around a lot of people who are doing what you want to be doing because they bring not only their knowledge and their experience, Experience and their perspectives, but they also bring their relationships and their deal flow. And it's a great way. So as great as it is to be on the internet and listening to podcasts and reading books, uh, this is a business where you got to get out in the real world and meet people and see things and get connected. Uh, real estate is done uh, outside, not inside. And, and so I just encourage you to find a good group to become a part of and study together and help each other. And probably that will evolve into doing some business together, but don't make that the priority. Make the priority learning, getting connected, expanding your influence and your network and you'll be off to a great start. All right, great question, Daryl. I could say more, but I won't because our next question is kind of related. This comes from Chris in Sun Valley, California. How would you guys recommend I better analyze and understand deals? Should I get a mentor, attend seminars, and if so, which ones, self-educate, or take some sort of classes? There are a lot of people out there, and I feel like my questions are so elementary. All right, well, Chris... There's no such thing as a bad question except the one you don't ask. So everybody who is at the front of the line was once at the back of the line. And everybody who owns real estate today started with their first property. So if you're not yet there, uh, you've got to learn how to analyze deals. It's one of the critical skill sets. Now, it's not maybe the most important skill set, but it's certainly critical. If you don't know what you're looking at, you can't make a good decision. So when it comes to figuring out how to analyze deals, 
there are some basic things you definitely want to understand. I think the first thing, if you're analyzing deals for income, then you just need to understand the basic components of a uh, income statement for a piece of property. And you can do that by looking at a lot of deals because they'll come with pro formas and and you'll be able to look at the financials. And then you can go out and look at real world deals and begin to fill those blanks in for yourself. And you'll learn by doing that, doing research. Once you feel like you've got the fundamentals down and you understand the basics of, of financial analysis, uh, then you can take it to the next level and use what we mentioned earlier, the idea of going and finding somebody who's really busy, who's got deal flow, and need somebody to do that first line screening for them. And you can volunteer to do that work. And they'll look over your shoulder shoulder, double check your work, and you can learn by doing that. On the other side of it is on the real estate side of it is actually analyzing the market, analyzing the uh, physical construction of the property and the condition of the property in the neighborhood. And again, same thing. If you're if you can find somebody uh, who is active in the space and learn to help them or learn by helping them, then you'll you'll just pick up a lot of stuff by osmosis. I mean, it, there are classes you can take certainly, uh, but anybody that's ever gone through any type of technical training in school gets out into the real world and then they apprentice with somebody who's been practicing that skill set in the real world. You need the educational foundation to be able to learn from the more experienced person, but the real learning happens in the real world when you're when you're being taught by somebody who's been there, done that. So uh, put the two together. Start start with some basic education. There's a lot out there. And to Robert's point, nothing is too elementary. You know, you definitely want to ask questions. But if you do avail yourself of just good books and and webinars and things that are out there that cover the basics, then by the time you get into a conversation with somebody, you'll be past the elementary questions and you'll be asking uh, more reasonable questions, and then then you're going to be ready to actually go out and do some work uh, with a mentor looking over your shoulder. Uh, and you, you're either going to pay them to look over your shoulder and do the work for you, or you're going to exchange your labor for their mentorship and do the work for them. But either way, you got to do the work, and that's the point. Yeah, absolutely. And you have to understand that I think there is a lot of great information out there about understanding things like the basic income formula and how rents are calculated and vacancy factors and net operating income and all that. It's uh, beyond the, the scope of uh, today to go through those things, but you can find that information pretty easily. But here's the deal. You don't get good at analyzing and understanding and vetting and underwriting deals by reading textbooks or taking classes. You get introduced to it that way. And then just look at a lot of deals. And that's relatively easy to do. It's easier and better if you can do that with help. It could be someone who's been there before, but it could just be a group of students that are analyzing deals. And we look at a lot of deals even today. Today, we're probably better at it than we were. But when we started out, it's certainly one of the ways I learned. And, and it's going to be dependent upon the space you're in. I was just uh, at the Money Show and I spent a half a day listening to managers of REITs, real estate investment trusts. And even though I know a lot about real estate and been involved with a lot of these asset types, the language of REITs and the way they approach properties and markets is very different from individual real estate investors. So just hanging around those folks, I learned a ton in a half a day. So do we suggest you get a mentor, attend seminars, or take classes or self-educate? Yes, all of that. There's not one thing that's better than the other, except it's got to lead to action. That's our motto, education for effective action. Don't get stuck like a bookworm, just understanding and analyzing and running spreadsheets. It's got to lead to something. So uh, the way you get out of asking elementary questions is you learn that stuff and move on. Great question, though. We appreciate it. It's Ask the Guys today. Your questions, our answers, lots more to come. You're tuned to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms. Live nationwide, you're listening to The Real Estate Guys. Find out more at realestateguysradio.com. If you love real estate and have always wanted to own your own business, listen up. 
the real estate guys and their panel of experts want to teach you how to go full-time fast in the real estate syndication business. These next few years may go down in history as one of the best times ever to acquire investment real estate. There are deals everywhere if you know where to look and how to assemble the resources. The Secrets of Successful Syndication Seminar will show you how to make big money doing big deals from a team of experts that have syndicated projects totaling more than $1 billion. Don't wait for someone to give you a raise or create a job for you. Attend the Secrets of Successful Syndication and learn how to build a team, raise capital, find deals, and make full-time money in six months or less. Go to realestateguysradio.com and click on events. All the big players use syndication as a way to diversify risk, optimize profits, and earn big money. You can too. Go to realestateguysradio.com and click on events. Are you looking to create sustainable wealth through agricultural real estate? Then look no further than Agro Nosotros. They're a sustainable specialty agriculture company with specialty coffee farming operations in Panama and fine flavor organic chocolate operations in Belize. Over the last four years, they've helped ordinary people to diversify outside of traditional real estate and into offshore agricultural real estate. They don't have your typical tenants, termites, and troubles. Their tenants are trees, and they grow and produce two hugely popular and proven products, coffee and chocolate. Through Agro Nosotros, you can own half-acre parcels in your very own specialty coffee or organic cacao farm turnkey managed on your behalf that produce passive cash flow for you and your heirs. And you can feel good about where you put your money to work. Agro Nosotros has socially sustainable programs that provide living wages, improved accommodations, and a steady channel to market to literally hundreds of farmers. And so far, they place 61 kids in school. To find out more and see how you can get involved, email agro at realestateguysradio.com. That's agro, A-G-R-O, at realestateguysradio.com. Hi, this is Kevin Harrington, an original shark from the hit TV show Shark Tank, and you're listening to The Real Estate Guys. Welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program. Thanks so much for tuning into the show. No matter how you listen to The Real Estate Guys on the radio, podcast, or through one of your other favorite venues, we're thrilled that you're here. And it's a good week to join us because it's Ask the Guys. If you have a question for the guys, all you do is go to the website at realestateguysradio.com and click the button that says Ask the Guys. And while we can't answer every question, uh, we certainly try to answer the ones that we think will have broad appeal. This question comes from Andrew, who is all the way in Malraskala, Malta. So all the way from Malta. This may be our first Ask the Guys question from Malta. Uh, So here he says, gentlemen, I've just discovered you. Through your recent interview with Chris Martinson, and I signed up for your newsletter right away. I'm exploring your website, but I have a few questions about real estate investing. You might have already answered them in the past, and if so, please direct me to the answers. I realize that each person's situation is unique, but not considering the tax aspects, what do you think is better for a potential real estate investor who is living in rented accommodations? A, buy an apartment to live in yourself, or B, buy an apartment to let, to rent, and keep living in your rented apartment. Considering that most mortgages go out several years, do you think real estate is still a good investment for someone in their 60s or older? What are your thoughts about engaging the services of a broker, either as a buyer or as a seller? My experience with brokers has been quite poor, so I wonder whether that was simply because I made bad choices. Many thanks, Andrew. All right, Andrew, several things in here, but uh, thanks to the folks at Peak Prosperity, Chris Martinson and Adam Taggart, they have uh, actually invited Russ and I to do a whole series of webinars on real estate investing, which has been a lot of fun, kind of in the middle of that. And uh, you can get information about that and actually watch the first one online on our website. But um, I think the first thing, anytime you're renting a property and you're thinking, should I buy a property or should I keep renting and invest in something else? It really comes down to personal investment philosophy That's who you are as an investor, and we covered that in the series with Chris Martinson. It's also in our book, Equity Happens, if you can find a copy of that, and we've done shows on it. So personal investment philosophy is the notion that no two investors are alike, that the reason you're investing has to do with what you're trying to get personally out of real estate. Some people need cash flow right away. Some people are looking to build a financial fortress around their family. Some people like to visit different places of the world and make them tax write-offs. Everybody's different. So whatever that is, you get in touch with that. And I'll tell you, we had a student who was renting a house and 
had an agreement with his landlord to be able to sublet the rooms. So he paid the rent every month and he had five bedrooms. He kept the master and rented out four bedrooms. And check this out. For what he got in rent from the four bedrooms, it paid the entire rent. Now, as far as the landlord was concerned, he was the tenant. He was making the payment, but he got the money from his tenants. Meanwhile, he bought investment property. Well, why is that? Because in his particular situation, he was living for free. It didn't make sense for him to buy a unit to live in and then have to make the mortgage payment and the property taxes and all that. Maybe he could have bought a property where he rented out the rooms. But rather than take that risk and risk of capital, he thought the best thing to do would be get started in another market. So that's another clue about it. If you live in a market that is a great rental market, you could consider that. But if you don't, then live where you want to live and invest where the numbers make sense. So there's not a clear-cut answer in this, and I hate to give the it depends all the time, but it really does depend on what you're intending to do and your lifestyle. It used to be the American dream, we called it, and maybe it's true in Malta as well, that folks eventually want to own their own property and have all the benefits and peace of mind of owning the house they live in. But that is less and less the case. Today, it's about the financial and lifestyle benefits. We have another great friend who could easily afford to buy all the houses he needs, but instead rents two apartments because he likes to travel between a couple of different markets. And they're really nice apartments, and they're in apartment buildings that aren't for sale. So he pays high rent, and his landlord's happy, but you know what? He's happy too. And he could move with a, you know within the lease parameters, which are typically a year to year. Now, for me, I don't want my landlord to be able to tell me when I'm going to move. I want to have more control within that. So you've got to make those decisions for yourself. I think one of the basic premises on anything that's an expense is if you have the ability, even at your personal residence, to create excess capacity and then rent out that excess capacity or sell that excess capacity uh, to anybody in order to cover your own expense, you can you can be in for free. That's kind of what our friend did. And you could do that as an owner, you could do that as a renter. Uh, so you just look for those opportunities. But again, to Robert's point, that is really about what you want for your own personal life. So those are personal decisions. Home is really not an investment. Home is home. And so the first criteria for that should be whether or not it's going to be a uh, place you're going to want to live and be productive and be centered to go do all the work you need to do. And of course, the market is also important, as Robert mentioned. I think I, I want to jump in on this notion of getting started in your 60s. And I, there might be something in between, but but that one has kind of hit me. And I, I think, you know, the idea of using a mortgage long term, does I don't think it has anything to do with age. It's the idea of being able to grab purchasing power from the future and bring it into the present. Um, you know, if you happen to pass away before that mortgage is paid off, uh, you don't have to worry about it. So that's less important. Meanwhile, you have the opportunity to control a property. I think the bigger decision about making an investment at any stage in life is what are you trying to accomplish? If you're in your 60s and you've built up a decent sized nest egg and you're less concerned with growing your capital other than just preserving it and maybe advancing it a little bit above inflation, but what you're really looking for is cash flow to live on, then that's a different investment decision. You might want to be on the debt side. You don't need to be on the equity side of real estate in order to do that later in life. You're less concerned about where the property is going to be in 30 years. You're more concerned about how much cash flow do I have this year, the next five or 10 or years or whatever that looks like. And you can balance that with some equity investments in your portfolio so that you have some hedges against long-term inflation, but you also have some good predictable income without the possibility of any responsibility, cash calls, uh, depletion of equity because of a downturn in the market or whatever. If you're in your 60s and you're trying to create a, a bigger balance sheet, you need more equity, well, then you're going to have to invest for that. And that may be completely different. You may be focusing on markets where you're doing value add, where there's a vibrant market, where you're aggressively looking for properties that are undervalued. You're going to go in there and do some work, or you're going to partner with somebody who's going to do some work. Uh, they do the grunt work, you supply the capital, again, depending on what you have to work with. But the idea is you're focused on creating more faster. 
you know, you can wholesale at any age. That's another great way to create instant cash in real estate if you don't have a lot to work with. So the age question is interesting, but it really is a question is what's your time horizon? What are you trying to accomplish? And what do you have to work with? And then beginning to solve the specific problems that you have uh, and not just the generic, hey, I'm in my 60s because one person in their 60s has one set of circumstances and goals and resources and someone else has a completely different set. So you have to look at your own unique situation and, and work from there. And 60 is the new 40, so it's not like you don't have time. You're right that mortgages tend to go out a few years. Uh, in the U.S., we use mortgages that are 15-year or 30-year, even 40-year mortgages. But the vast majority of those mortgages do not go full term. You might get into a property with a 30-year amortization and a 30-year note and move in six years. So very, very common to not hold that. And if you've got an investing time horizon of 10, 15, or 20 years, mortgages can still be a great tool. So I wouldn't shy away from mortgages because of your age. Now, your last question, what are your thoughts about engaging the services of a broker? We have strong feelings about this. And let me start by telling you this. If you've listened to the show for some period of time, you probably know that I like beer. And I like a lot of different beers. And I try different beers everywhere I go. And not every single beer that I try is a good beer. In fact, some of those beers are darn right awful. But I still love beer. Not all real estate brokers are great. But we strongly believe you want to work with a great real estate broker or agent, depending on where you are in the world. They may or may not be licensed, not very familiar with how all that works in Malta. But I can totally empathize that you had a bad experience with a broker, but don't let that throw out all the beer. I mean, all the brokers, right? Let that just be what it was and interview brokers with your newfound zest and education to find a great broker. He or she can help you in so many ways, not just finding property or finding buyers, but all the legal nuances, understanding the differences between neighborhoods, making, helping you to make decisions that you need to make from someone that has experience working with a lot of other buyers and sellers. So we're pretty much big fans of brokers. Uh, I think we're, we're always cautious when people don't want to be represented because that can lead to a bunch of ugly. You know, there's just so much in life to keep up on. And if you are going to go do anything at speed with a high level of competency and scale, you're going to need a great team. And you would never think about trying to be a one-person basketball team or football team. You would never try to go out and build a big business uh, as a one-man band. So the idea that you may have a bad hire from time to time, a bad player from time to time, that's just life. You learn. But when you interview better, when you learn how to set expectations better, when you train better, uh, when you're more clear about what it is you need and what it is you want. And so a lot of that is on you, and that's just part of learning. So I would say go back and look at the situation, and not just that it was bad, but ask yourself, why was it bad? What did I learn? What do I wish that I knew at the beginning of the process that I know now? What can I carry forward into my next exchange? And we have a few questions. I'll just rattle them off real quick and we'll get into great detail on them. But the first question we want to ask is, is the person who's going to be on our team, are they an active investor themselves? If they are, then whatever it is they're doing, uh, they're going to pay more attention to and they're going to know what it is to be in your shoes. Number two is how much of their business, how much of their practice is dedicated to working with people just like you, solving problems that you have on a daily basis. So that's very important. The third thing is, is how, how well do they play with others? Because they're going to be part of your team. They're not operating in a silo. If they can't work with the other members of your team, they're probably not going to be very effective for you. So if they're, uh, you know, one of these people that always has to be right, that never can listen to anybody else's opinion, that is confrontational and argumentative and not constructive, then they're probably not going to be a good fit. Uh, the other one is who supports you and how, because somebody can be brilliant, but if they have a personal family, emergency or they get sick or go on vacation and you're in the middle of a transaction, you better know that they're backed up. So those are a few questions that you want to ask going into the relationship um, and so that you can begin to understand 
if this person is really the right match. And then, and then after that, it's like, okay, then you have to talk about communication style. This is my expectation. This is what I'm hiring you to do. This is what a 10, if you were a perfect broker for me, this is what that looked like. Now let me flip it around, Mr. Broker. If I'm the perfect customer for you, what does that look like? And what you're looking for is a high degree of alignment. When you get that, then you're going to have a good working relationship and a competent person on your team. It's Ask the Guys. Your questions are answers. We'll turn the tables when we come back and ask you a question for Real Estate Trivia next. You're tuned to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms. Real estate investment advice right in your mailbox. Sign up for the free Real Estate Guys newsletter at realestateguysradio.com. Hungry for more real estate investing ideas? Here's two steps you can take today. First, go to realestateguysradio.com and sign up for our weekly newsletter. You'll get access to a continuous feed of thought-provoking commentary specifically for real estate investors while also focusing on broader picture economics. Then, once you're at our site, look for the Resources tab where you'll find our amazing collection of special reports. Browse dozens of white papers, webinars, and market reports and request the ones that appeal to you. What are you waiting for? Head to realestateguysradio.com to implement education for effective action. Stop for a moment. Why are you listening to this show? Are you dreaming of a bigger, brighter financial future? More personal freedom to live life on your own terms? What if there was just one skill that could make it happen? There is. Sales. Robert Kiyosaki says every entrepreneur must be good at sales. It's true for investors, too. Sales is how you attract money, people, and opportunities. Sales is the skill used to negotiate deals and lead your team. Sales skills are essential to success. The good news is, it's a learnable skill. The great news is, we've created a two-day interactive workshop to teach those skills to you. Make plans today to attend How to Win Funds and Influence People, Mastering the Art of Financial Selling. For dates and details, send an email to sales at realestateguysradio.com or visit realestateguysradio.com and look under events. Gain the skills you need to succeed. Email sales at realestateguysradio.com or look under the events tab at realestateguysradio.com. Memphis is famous for being the home of the king of rock and roll, but it's also the king of cash flow. If you're looking for affordable cash flow properties, it's hard to beat Memphis. Get your portfolio rocking and more cash flowing your way by calling Terry Kerr at Mid-South Home Buyers. Terry's the king of turnkey properties. Contact Terry through the resource section at realestateguysradio.com. And be sure to order Terry's tips for turnkey rental property investing report. It's free. Just send your request to turnkey at realestateguysradio.com. Hi, I'm Mark Victor Hans. You're listening to The Real Estate Guys. If you want to expand your consciousness, expand your wealth, expand your future, and have more delight and excite in your future than in your past, Keep listening to The Real Estate Guys. Welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program. Thanks for tuning into the show. If you've ever wanted to see an amazing real estate market offshore, then come join me for our Belize field trip happening in early July. All the details at realestateguysradio.com. Under events, it's Ask the Guys. Your questions are answers. We've got lots more questions. But first, it's time to ask you a question as we play real estate trivia. In just a minute, you're going to hear a trivia question that has something to do with real estate. When you hear the question and think you know the answer, quickly fire off your best guess to trivia at realestateguysradio.com. Trivia at realestateguysradio.com. Include your name, the answer to the question, and your mailing address so that if you're the winner, we can send you out an amazing book called Resilience, Turning Your Setback into a Comeback. It's a bunch of amazing stories from folks who have seen ugly and made it work. You're going to dig this book. That could be yours if you know today's real estate trivia question. Last week on the show, we were talking about taxes, tariffs, and trade. When we had Peter Schiff with us, we gave away one of his amazing books, and we asked this. When was the first tariff law passed in the United States? Well, the first tariff law passed by the U.S. Congress, acting under the then-recently ratified Constitution, was the Tariff of 1789. Here's our real estate trivia question for this week. How many countries border Germany? Yeah, Germany borders a bunch of different countries. How many countries border the country of Germany? 
If you know or just want to take a guess, send your best guess to trivia at realestateguysradio.com. Trivia at realestateguysradio.com. You need to send us your name, the answer to the question, and your mailing address so that if you're the winner, we can send you resilience, turning your setback into a comeback. That's today's real estate trivia question. Speaking of questions, it's Ask the Guys. Your questions are answers. If you have a question for the Real Estate Guys, just go to the website at realestateguysradio.com and click Ask the Guys. This one comes from Tim in Lansing, Michigan. Hey, guys, I'm planning to go on my first Summit at Sea in 2020. Well, that's great news. The uh, next Summit at Sea is in June of 2020, and you can get on the advanced notice list if you'll go to realestateguysradio.com and click the button that says Summit. He says, I currently own one storage facility with plans to own more. Have you guys ever had one of the faculty members speak about self-storage at all? Thanks, Tim. All right, Tim. Well, yes, we have. And even more interesting, perhaps, long before the 2020 Investor Summit, in just a few weeks, we've got a show all about self-storage. So we've got some folks in our world that uh, specialize in this. I remember one of the very first summits we were on, we had a couple. And it was when we first transitioned. So a little backstory on the Summit at Sea. Uh, we've been doing it for years and years and years, coming up our 18th summit. But we actually started doing some cruises before that where folks from the state of California could renew their real estate licenses. We called it DRE, Department of Real Estate, DRE at Sea. And one of the first summits, we had a couple and they were renewing their real estate licenses, but they weren't active. And we were talking about investment and they didn't really that interested in apartments or single family homes. And I got talking to them at dinner, turns out they were successful real estate brokers and they put together, you know, a few investments themselves. And then they got involved with self-storage. And at the time they owned three self-storage facilities and it's all the income they needed. They were done. They were essentially retired and they just wanted to keep their licenses current because why not? So I thought, hmm, self-storage sounds interesting. Your tenants are boxes. So anyway, stay tuned. And in a few weeks, we'll uh, present you uh, that program on self-storage. And I'm guessing we probably will have somebody on the 2020 Summit at Sea. For sure, someone in the space, whether or not it's a faculty member, we shall see. Thanks, Tim. Our next question comes from Laura in Austin, Texas. She says, good afternoon. I'm looking to learn how real estate plays into the economic cycle and how it's affected by ebbs and flows. For example, the interest rates rise, the housing market does such and such, or the economy is on a downtrend, interest rates decreasing, causing deflation, which means the housing prices are decreasing, causing the market to slow down. Now, it may sound like I know a little bit of what I'm talking about, but I'm really just a baby learning. If you can refer me to some podcasts, books, etc., it would help immensely. Thank you, Laura. All right, Laura. Well, the first book out of the gate, since I have the mic, I'm going to suggest to you is a book by Peter Schiff. We had him on the show last week. Peter and his brother rewrote a classic book that their dad wrote, and the rewrite's called How an Economy Grows and Why It Crashes. Now, it's a simple book, and it's done in a way that makes everybody understand, but it's also super, super powerful. And I will tell you this. It's taken Russ and I years to get our mind around this stuff. The reason we cover broader picture economics and not just 100% real estate on this show is that every real estate investor is first and foremost an investor. And we all swim in this economic sea in the financial system that we're blessed or cursed with. So it is imperative that you understand it. With that said, I don't know that anybody truly understands it, but there is definitely a lot that you can learn by listening to people who have different opinions. And the Summit at Sea is great for that because we get people who come in and they have a background in gold, they have a background in oil, they have backgrounds in uh, observing the banking and the paper asset markets. Of course, we have all kinds of different real estate investors in different niches and different markets from all over the world, and you get all of those perspectives, that helps. There's a lot of great books to read. There are some good podcasts, but not just real estate podcasts. We go to the New Orleans Investment Conference every year, for example, and that's been a long-term metals and mining conference. We brought a lot of real estate perspective there. Uh, I think we've done a pretty good job on the show and in our weekly newsletter uh, talking about uh, 
the economics of real estate and the ebbs and the flows, if you will. In fact, that's interesting to use that term because we did a whole presentation at our 2012 Summit at Sea talking about the ebb and flow of what happens when currency expands through the Federal Reserve and then how that trickles through the economy. It doesn't really trickle down, it trickles around. And understanding how that affects different asset classes, most notably interest rates, which is a big driver of real estate everywhere. Uh, so I, I would say study the, the Federal Reserve, study the bond markets, because that's where interest rates derive from. Uh, study demographics, because that dictates where the people are. And then understand the way CEOs think about business and where they want to be and where they don't want to be and why. Uh, tax has become a big part of it now. We have, uh, with tax reform here in the United States, We've now made real estate arguably the most taxed advantaged investment anybody could make. Uh, that should attract even more money into real estate going forward. So that that's relatively bullish. Then you've got the whole opportunity zone thing, uh, and that's helping take money out of the paper asset world and bringing it into real estate. So there is really no one singular dimension. You know, if you're studying an ecosystem, as Robert mentioned, there are lots and lots and lots of components. And you're not going to master them all. But if you can understand the relationships between them, become conversant, and then get into conversations. I'm going to go back to what I've been harping on this whole show, is how important it is to get around people and talk to them. And so the Summit and the New Orleans Investment Conference are two places, especially the Summit, where you can get together with lots of really smart people for an extended period of time and have in-depth conversations. You will learn more in 10 days on the Summit at Sea than most people learn in 10 years. I know because we've been doing it for a long, long time. That's what people tell us happens. I've certainly experienced that. And so, but you don't want to come in as a complete newbie. You've already, I can tell from your question, you've already started studying. Just keep studying and just have faith. Brian Tracy says, if you read an hour a day in whatever area of interest you have in 10 years, you'll be a nationally known uh, expert. I, I believe that's true. It's happened to me. Uh, I've seen it happen to other people. It can happen to you too. I'm not sure if our recommended reading section on the website is up to date. We've been having some issues with that, but we're working on it. So check the Resource Center. If it's not there, then send us a note on our feedback page. And we have several books that we've read over the years that we think really help people get a good foundational understanding of economics and especially how they pertain to real estate. And then I would say subscribe to our newsletter and just read it every week because we almost always address something relative to what's going on to the economy and how it relates to real estate investors as opposed to stock investors. Now, I am uh, not certainly going to second the idea to come on the summit, but it does take a bunch of time and a bunch of money to do that. Coming up in November, the first part of November, it is the New Orleans Investment Conference. And what's great about that conference is it is a mining and resource and gold conference. And you'll hear a lot of folks talk about what's happening in the economy and talk about many of the things you're asking about. And it's a wide variety of speakers. Plus, We'll hang out with the real estate guys. We're doing our annual suite party. And if you are interested in coming to New Orleans and learning about lots of different asset classes, plus lots of real estate, and hanging out with the real estate guys at our always the hit of the event suite party, just send an email to New Orleans at realestateguysradio.com and you'll get all the details. One other thing I might suggest, and that is as you're trying to get your head around this information, uh, we did a great video series last year called The Future of Money and Wealth, and you can find that if you go to our website at realestateguysradio.com under events. It's not really an event, but if you go under events, you'll see Future of Money and Wealth and uh, lots of big brains talking about this stuff. And uh, I tell you what, I thought I knew a lot until I listened to what all these amazing folks had to say. Peter Schiff's there, Robert Kiyosaki, G. Edward Griffin, Simon black on and on and on and uh, check that out so don't be overwhelmed or intimidated I know you think you're just a baby in terms of learning this stuff but babies learn everything they need to learn to live and become successful folks and same thing with investors it's ask the guys your questions our answers more when we come back you're tuned to the real estate guys radio program I'm your host Robert Helms Need help with your real estate investment portfolio? Check out the resources page at realestateguysradio.com. Hey, it's Robert Helms. Thanks so much for listening to the show today. 
I want to personally invite you to come see an amazing real estate market that combines excellent cash flow, offshore diversification, and what we affectionately call lifestyle investing. Come join me from July 5th to 8th in the beautiful country of Belize. The Real Estate Guys have been bringing investors to Belize for more than 13 years now, and our discovery trip is designed to show you the market like nobody else can. Sure, Belize is breathtakingly beautiful, the people are wonderful, and wait till you taste the food. But the real opportunity is the real estate investment potential. 2018 was the biggest year in tourism Belize has ever witnessed, and this year is starting off strong. How does that translate to real estate investment? That's what you have to come see. There's all types of opportunity in Belize when it comes to real estate, including both long-term and short-term rentals, commercial and retail triple net properties, business opportunities, land acquisition, development, agriculture, and more. And as the only country in Latin America with English as its official language, it's easy to understand the law. Property rights are strong and contracts are in English. And in Ambergris Key, a unique situation exists where demand for rentals continues to outstrip supply creating a compelling environment for investors. So come see for yourself. Join me July 5th through 8th in Ambergris Key, Belize, as we study the market, learn about the sustainable drivers, and tour lots of beautiful real estate. And like all of our field trips, there are no properties for sale during the weekend. Rather, you'll meet lots of local providers that will help educate you about the market so you can follow up with them after the trip if the market's interesting to you. But that ball's in your court. You'll receive their contact details, but they won't receive yours unless you give it to them. You've heard about Belize and the Real Estate Guys for all these years. Now come see what all the excitement is about. Plus, we'll have lots of time over meals and activities to talk about all things real estate. To get the details, go to the website at realestateguysradio.com and click on Events, where you'll find the Belize Discovery Trips. Once you register, you'll get information about our group hotel rates as well as travel details. So join me in Belize, July 5th through 8th. It's a beautiful country with lots of amazing possibilities, and the only thing missing is you. Go to realestateguysradio.com under events. I look forward to seeing you in beautiful Belize. Hi, this is Patrick Donahoe of Paradigm Life. Over the last few years, I've had the privilege of sharing the services of Paradigm Life with you loyal Real Estate Guys Radio listeners through our website, www.beerbank.com, and also on the annual Investor Summit at Sea. Subsequently, we have seen a variety of financial situations across the socioeconomic spectrum and how everyone, regardless of their situation, would improve their financial lives by following the system we specialize in. As a result of this experience, we have created an online e-learning system so anyone without obligation can learn about the infinite banking concept. This free e-learning program is found on our website, www.beerbank.com. So check it out today. The website again is www.beerbank.com. Hi, this is Mauricio Raul, the founder and CEO of Mir Law Group, and you're listening to The Real Estate Guys. Welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program. We're so glad you tuned into the show today. Tell a friend about The Real Estate Guys, and if you've ever wanted to have better skills at persuasion, influence, and sales, then it is time to get registered for How to Win Funds and Influence People, our once-a-year workshop on sales and the strategies and the skills you need to be able to sell anything to anybody. It's absolutely amazing. It's two days of yes training, but also a ton of role playing. And you're gonna dig it. All the details on our website at realestateguysradio.com. It's Ask the Guys, your questions and our answers. A couple of quick questions to knock out here. Uh, this first one uh, comes from Dorothea in Indianapolis. She says, hey guys, when will the next Secrets of Successful syndication be? Well, our syndication event is a two-day event that happens twice a year. The next one is September 27th and 28th of 2019. But depending on when you're listening to this, just go to the website at realestateguysradio.com. By the way, a lot of people call us the Real Estate Radio Guys. So if you want to go to realestateradioguys.com, you can do that as well. And then under the button that says events, you'll see the secrets of successful syndication, which almost always has the next dates available. Now, this next question is from Sarah in Bozeman, Montana, and it's kind of related. She says, hello, folks. My husband and I are both in our 20s. We own and operate our own construction business in Bozeman, Montana, and we would love to begin learning about real estate syndication, me in particular. We would really like to attend your summit at sea, but are unable to afford the cost of cruising in this season of life. Do you offer a cheaper summit, one that is bare bones cost-wise, or do you offer scholarships for the summit at sea event? We're just trying to explore options 
for how we may be able to learn and get our hands on this valuable information without living above our means. Thank you, Sarah. Well, Sarah, congratulations on that thought process. I wish more young people would concentrate on living below their means and not above. But first of all, I would say the easiest and quickest and much less expensive way to get your head around syndication is the event we just talked about. The Secrets of Successful Syndication, a quick plane ride from Bozeman. I know because I've made that plane ride before to Dallas and uh, you can check that two-day event out in September. You'll learn a ton about syndication. If you guys can both attend, great, but since you're the one most interested, make sure you're at that event. Uh, the earlier you sign up, the less expensive it is. Nothing like the investment for the summit. Uh, as far as the summit goes, absolutely, we do not have a cheaper bare bones version. It's really the point of the summit. I know it's a lot of time and a lot of money, but because it is, the people that are there are absolutely extraordinary. It's a huge investment, but it's one that should pay back multiple times. Now, having said that, we do offer scholarships to folks in their 20s. If you're actually between the ages of 18 and 25, we have a very favorable young adults program. So you can go for less than the cost of the summit, less than what it costs us to put on. And we have a limited number of young adult spots, but not that limited. It's like 30 or 40. And so we'd love to have you, depending on where you are in your 20s. Uh, if you're over 25, well, then you have to figure something else out. But if you're between 18 and 25 and you still can't afford the summit at sea but want to be there, our great summiteers have helped us put together a big scholarship fund, and there's a whole process for how you can apply for a scholarship. So anybody listening who has a young person in their life that they think could be influenced by being around this information earlier in life, that's exactly why we do it. You can find out all the information at realestateguysradio.com under Summit. Hey, Sarah, I have a couple of thoughts on this, too. First, uh, this is kind of a shout to everybody out there that has young people, as Robert mentioned. If you're part of the older crowd out there like we are, uh, I think we need to partner with the young people in our lives. We need to get them educated. We need to put them in environments where we can cross-pollinate uh, some timeless wisdom for a new generation. Uh, I've been spending a lot of time. I've got many kids that are millennials and been spending lots and lots of time with them, preparing them in entrepreneurship and investing. It's been fabulous. The young adult program has been vibrant. We've got a lot of enthusiasm around that. Uh, our good friend Brian London over at the New Orleans Investment Conference we mentioned earlier also has a young adult program. Uh, if you can't swing the summit at sea, but you're really interested in understanding kind of economics and what's going on in the world, the New Orleans Investment Conference is a less expensive version. You might also jump in on the Future and Money and Wealth video series that Robert mentioned earlier. You can learn more about that at Future at realestateguysradio.com. Uh, it's not as good as being in a room full of people and having conversations, but you can accomplish that by coming to the syndication seminar. So there's a lot of ways to get the job done. Part of it is going to be getting exposed to information. A lot of it is going to be about getting exposed to people and putting yourself in an environment where you can go from information to transformation. And that may sound a little bit metaphysical, but it, it really isn't. It's just a paradigm shift. It's learning how to think bigger, think differently, see more opportunity, process faster, pick up some thought patterns and habits and attitudes and beliefs that successful people have. And you do that by being around them. So Robert and I spend a lot of time and effort putting ourselves in those environments, creating those environments. We document as much as we can through podcast, newsletter, and the video series that we put together uh, so that people can start with the information, but you really want to take the next step and get into the environment. So I love the way that you're thinking. Just encourage you to push yourself a little bit. Uh, don't ask, say, I can't. Say, how can I afford it? I think if you ask yourself the right question, you're going to get an answer you like a whole lot better. Our last question comes from Jamie in Chicago, Illinois. Hey guys, would you pay for the mentoring program from blank, insert brand name here, my gut is no because I've read a lot of poor reviews online and very few good reviews. But I'm really interested in real estate investing. I just have a weird feeling paying for versus finding a mentor organically. What are your thoughts? Well, as you can imagine, with just a few seconds left of the program, we have so many thoughts. 
We don't have time to cover it, but we're not putting you off. Next week, our entire show will be devoted to how you find a great mentor. There's a lot of great tools and techniques out there. There are free mentors, there are paid mentors, there's class programs, there's the organic searching method, there's all kinds of stuff. We'll talk about that all next week. So, Jamie, thanks for the question. Our next show is going to be about finding a mentor. Thanks to everyone who submitted their questions. Keep them coming. If you have a question for the Real Estate Guys, go to realestateguysradio.com and click on Ask the Guys. And in a few short weeks, we'll have another program like this. Until then, go out and make some equity happen. This episode of the Real Estate Guys Radio Show is brought to you by Paradigm Life. Powerful cash management strategies using life insurance. Learn more at beyourbank.com. Mid-South Home Buyers, low-cost, turnkey cash flow properties in Memphis, Tennessee. Corporate Direct, asset protection strategies for real estate investors from attorney and rich dad advisor Garrett Sutton. Find these and other great companies under the Resources tab at realestateguysradio.com. To learn how you can expose your product or service to the Real Estate Guys audience, call 888-489-7723, extension 4. That's 888-489-7723, extension 4. Or use the feedback page at realestateguysradio.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week right here on the Real Estate Guys Radio Show.